Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I built the fastest portable SSD that I've ever tested, and it only took two parts and a few minutes to assemble. I've linked to the parts that I used in the description, and in this video, I'll show you how it all works. A portable SSD essentially consists of two parts, the storage drive itself and an enclosure to house it and to provide the connectivity. The most common portable SSDs connect to standard USB ports, but these run at different speeds and often cause a bottleneck. I'd originally planned to explain all the USB standards and various connectivity issues, but to be honest, it's become boring even to a geek like me. If you are interested, I've gone into more detail in my original review of the SanDisk Extreme Pro drive, which I've linked to here. But the bottom line is the vast majority of USB connections are limited to 10 gigabits per second in practice. A handful of lucky people with computers and drives that support both USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 or which both support USB 4 may be able to enjoy quicker speeds but again most of us will hit a wall with practical rates that are limited to just under 1000 megabytes per second. Frustratingly, that also includes connecting a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 drive like the SanDisk Extreme Pro, which I've got here, onto any Mac today. And that includes the 2021 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros, both of which support USB 4 ports. I tried it on my own 14-inch 2021 model, and annoyingly, that connection, that combination, was still limited to 10 gigabits per second. Now, 10 gigabits per second is still fast enough for most situations, but if you want the fastest possible speeds from an external drive, I found the easiest solution is to dump USB in favor of Thunderbolt 3, which supports theoretical speeds up to 40 gigabits per second. On the downside, Thunderbolt 3 drives or enclosures to build your own do work out more expensive than plain USB models, and of course you will need a matching port on your computer too. But in my experience, they deliver reliably faster speeds in practice with less fuss and confusion overall. The good news for Mac owners is that Thunderbolt 3 has been a standard port since late 2016, so that's the past five years. And if your PC doesn't have a Thunderbolt 3 port, you can add one with an expansion card for roughly the same price as a card that offers a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 connection. Certainly easier to say, isn't it? While there are plenty of pre-built Thunderbolt 3 drives available, I decided to build my own for the maximum performance and flexibility, so I started to shop around for an enclosure that supported and could exploit the very fastest SSE drives available. I went for the Orico M2 V01-C4, which supports both Thunderbolt 3 and USB 4 connections up to 40 gigabits per second and it's backwards compatible with older ports and devices which means I can plug it into almost any device I own albeit of course running at slower speeds. The enclosure by itself costs around $180 and is designed for NVMe M.2 M key SSD drives and the beauty of a DIY project is being able to choose the exact drive that you want to fit inside it and upgrade it in the future too if you like. I ended up choosing the Samsung 980 Pro, which remains one of the fastest SSD drives around, claiming up to 7,000 megabyte per second read speeds. Now, I'm not going to get anywhere near that in a Thunderbolt enclosure, but my goal here was to achieve notably faster speeds than a respectable USB drive, like the SanDisk Extreme Pro. I went for the one terabyte version of the Samsung drive, which costs around $180 and in terms of lifespan has a quoted TBW of 600 terabytes. And that's a figure that's often lacking on pre-built drives. Also beware of smaller capacities that typically run slower and also have shorter TBWs. So I'd recommend the one terabyte size or larger. To assemble the drive, undo the single external screw on the case using the tool provided. Insert the SSD drive into the slot, screw it down with a supplied screw, unpeel and apply the heat spreader pad, then screw the case back together. You're done in less than five minutes. So the total cost for my do-it-yourself build was around $360, which makes it roughly double the price of a SanDisk Extreme Pro with the same capacity. Now for the following tests, SanDisk supplied a 2TB model for this review, but in my tests it actually performed very very similarly to the 1TB model that I tested a year before, so it's going to stand in for roughly the same capacity. So let's see how they measure up. Before the benchmarks, a quick note on some physical differences between these two drives. Most obviously, while my DIY drive isn't exactly large, 
It is much bigger than the SanDisk drive and won't slip as discreetly into thin pockets. The SanDisk drive is also lighter, which meant I was happy for it to occasionally dangle from my laptop when lifting it up, whereas I'd feel more comfortable having the Orico staying on the surface. I also preferred the look and feel of the rubberized case on the sand disc, although the aluminium shell of the Orico with its fins will be more effective at dissipating heat. And while it lacks the splash and dust resistant rating of the sand disc, it is physically tougher. Okay, now for the benchmarks for both drives, which I'm going to run on two different laptops. First, my 2018 13 inch MacBook Pro, followed by my 2021 14 inch MacBook Pro, both configured with 16 gigabytes of RAM and with drives measuring 500 gigabytes and one terabyte respectively. Both my MacBooks have USB-C ports supporting Thunderbolt 3, in fact Thunderbolt 4 on the latest one, and for these benchmarks, both the external drives were formatted using APFS, as I found that this delivers slightly better performance than XFAT, so long as you only intend to use it on Macs. If you intend to use the drive across multiple platforms, I'd format it as XFAT for greater compatibility. Okay, let's start with the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test Utility, which you can download for free for the SanDisk Extreme Pro drive connected to my older 13 inch 2018 MacBook Pro. Here you can see the drive delivering between 900 and 940 megabytes per second for both reads and writes, whether using the one gigabyte or five gigabyte stress size. These speeds are being limited by my old MacBook's ports, and if you had a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 port, you should hopefully achieve faster speeds. Next is the turn of my DIY drive connected to the same 2018 MacBook and the difference is dramatic with around 2300 megabytes per second for writes and around 2600 for reads. Now the drive may be connected to the exact same port as before but it's now talking to the computer using Thunderbolt 3 rather than USB and it significantly boosted the bandwidth with the speed working out roughly two and a half times quicker and that's also faster than the USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 port could have achieved as well. I'm delighted with this result especially on a three year old computer but wondered if my newer laptop could unleash anything quicker from each drive. So it's back to the SanDisk Extreme Pro drive, but this time connected to my newer 14 inch 2021 MacBook Pro. I'd hope the ports, which now support the newer USB 4 standard, might unlock more from this drive, but sadly not, as Apple's chipset doesn't specifically exploit USB 3.2 2x2. The speeds of 920 to 980 megabytes per second may be a tad faster than I achieved on my 2018 MacBook, but really they're in the same ballpark. And now for my DIY Thunderbolt drive, again connected to the exact same port and again delivering dramatically quicker speeds than the SanDisk USB drive. This time the overall speed was faster than on my previous 2018 MacBook with write speeds improving the most to around 2800 megabytes per second and read speeds a little bit better to around 2750 megabytes per second. So that's roughly three times faster than the SanDisk Extreme Pro drive, and that makes it the fastest portable SSD that I've ever tested. Moving on to real life tests, I timed the transfer of a 117 gigabyte ProRes video file between the MacBook and the drive. Starting with my older 2018 MacBook, the SanDisk Extreme Pro took 117 seconds to copy the file from the MacBook to the portable drive and 118 seconds to copy it back onto the MacBook again, so that's roughly 2 minutes for each test. Switching to my DIY drive connected to the same 2018 MacBook took 46 seconds to copy the file to the portable drive and 69 seconds to copy it back onto the MacBook again. Now between each read and write test I restarted the MacBook to clear any caches. So in this test my DIY drive was between 1.7 and 2.5 times faster. And now for my newer 2021 14 inch MacBook Pro which has faster internal storage. This time it took 121 seconds to copy the file from the MacBook to the SanDisk Extreme Pro drive and 122 seconds to copy it back onto the MacBook again. Interestingly, that's a fraction slower than on my 2018 MacBook, but it's within testing error. And now for my DIY drive connected to the same port on my 2021 MacBook Pro, which took 44 seconds to copy the data to the portable drive and 44 seconds to copy it back again. So this time, the faster internal storage of my newer MacBook allowed my DIY drive to operate roughly 2.8 times faster than the SanDisk Extreme Pro. So now, my final verdict. 
Portable USB drives like the SanDisk Extreme Pro series may be getting faster and faster, but depending on the plug you connect them to, you may not be achieving anywhere near their advertised speeds. This particularly applies to Mac owners who are unlikely to enjoy anything faster than 1000 megabytes per second from a portable USB drive in practice. Now Thunderbolt 3 drives are more expensive, but if your computer has a compatible port, you can typically unlock much faster speeds, while building your own drive gives you the additional flexibility of not only choosing the exact SSD drive within it, but the ability to swap it for a faster or bigger version in the future, or indeed upgrading the enclosure itself to exploit better future connectivity. And of course if you do upgrade the SSD, you could reuse that in another project. My combination of a Samsung SSD and Orico housing may have cost roughly double that of a SanDisk Extreme Pro of the same capacity, but it ran two to three times faster on both my new and old MacBooks. So of course the question becomes, how fast do you need your storage to be and how much are you willing to spend? Pre-built USB drives provide affordable and compact solutions, and while I couldn't personally unlock the top potential speed of the Extreme Pro on my own computers, read and write speeds up to 1000 megabytes per second are still fast enough for most, and there's also often good discounts available on these models. But if you desire faster still, perhaps for transferring or working on big video projects, then you will appreciate the speed of a Thunderbolt 3 drive and the flexibility of a DIY build. So if you've built your own portable drive, let me know what parts you've used and also what kind of speeds you're achieving in practice. If you're running it on a Mac, don't forget you can also download that Blackmagic disk speed utility that I used. And if you use the five gigabyte stress size, then we can also directly compare our results. And if you're interested in building a similar or even identical drive to what I did in this particular review, well, I've got a list of the parts I used in the description. Which only leaves me to say thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.